from the depths instant tutorial it's Jim Edism and you're watching instant tutorials today I'm going to show you how to make a burst gun the burst gun is a APS cannon that fires a rapid succession of shots if you want to watch this tutorial please watch my railgun and rail assisted cannon tutorial as well as my regular APS tutorials because we will jump over some of the basics of APS and railgun systems the pros of a burst gun is you can get the kind of shotgun effect, which gives you a natural spread to hit moving targets and fast targets a little bit more easily. Like other rail assisted systems, the burst gun is great for kinetic damage. Velocity times mass equals damage, and this is rail assist. When making a burst gun, you should not use the belt fed autoloader, you should use the normal autoloader, it works best. You will need to have as many autoloaders as you will have shots in the burst. Now I'm going to do what I consider the best maximum burst, which is 6 shots. Because we're going to divide up the barrel into several barrels to make the cooling a little bit more efficient. Because we are using these autoloaders, we should however add up ammo clips to the outloaders on all the sides so it will be a bit more efficient as well as ammo input feeders on all of the magazines because this is a rail assisted setup we of course need a lot of cooling we can add a little firing piece and of course a mantlet now this is a great AA gun so I'll go with a AA mantlet we'll set up a basic barrel for the time of being Go into the APS, select 6 barrels because I have 6 outloaders for the burst. We can already go into railgun and set the maximum energy to the max. And we'll leave it be for the time of being. Now we'll need to decide what gauge we want to have. So we can add a couple of gauge increasers until we're happy with the gauge. We should now play around and see how big of a shell we can fit here. And we'll go with a kinetic shell. Now you can have different shell types uh, on the same burst gun, but then you should make them so that they have the same speed and use the same um, rail charge. And doing that you can have, for example, armor piercing mixed with sabot or heavy head mixed with hollow point. Something like that should be the same. In any case, I'll go with sabot heads and a mix with sabot and solid warhead bodies. It's also a good idea to add a base bleeder to get faster shells and thus more damage. Now you can see this shell is a little bit too long and just a little bit too long. So we can go into the propellant here and decrease some of the propellants until we can fit it into a one meter clip, like that. And now we have our stats here. We can see how much rail draw we can get and it's 2178 per shot. Also. We selected the view stats for the firing piece, which is 70 mm there. We can also change the millimeter of the shell to make it fit if it's a little bit too long as well. All right, and we can just link up all this to this controller here. Now we can see the outloader limit of 145 RPM. We need to make the rail charge be a little bit quicker than this for it to work. Otherwise, it will start shooting in a normal succession rather than burst fire. So we'll of course go into the railgun parts and add some magnets here. We go down to the shell here and see the rail row is 2178. Now you will need a calculator. So 2178 times the amount of shots in a burst. And for me it's 6 and we'll get the value of uh, 13,300. So we go to the railgun magnets and we can see that each rail adds 5,000 energy. This means I should need uh, a little more than two, uh, so three of these I'll need to fire a full burst. And there we have it, we should be able to fire a full burst using these three magnets. It suffices to have magnets on only one side to make it a little bit easier to armor it up. So we can now fire a full burst with full a rail charge. And of course you can go in here and limit the amount used per shot as well if you want to and make it fit that way as well. 
you just need to make sure that you can fire the full burst using one charge to make it fire uh, nicely. We need to add railgun chargers in order to match and a little bit exceed the fire rate of the outloaders to make it work properly. Alright, so here's the thing. We have a couple of real uh, gun chargers here, and it may seem that this is actually fast enough. But if we are firing a couple of rounds, we will after a while notice that uh, your fire rate might get not burst anymore. And it starts to thin out like this. And this effect is caused by you not having enough real gun chargers available. So if we go in here, we can see that the railgun charging time is 0.45 seconds. And if we look at the rate of fire, it should be 0.52. But this is because we are currently limited by our ammo intakes. Now for this small shell, we have so many shots that it's gonna take a long time for it to actually get down to <clears throat> too little ammo. So this is not really a problem. We don't have to match the ammo intake limits. Uh, but it can be smart to do that to not get confused. You can see that 0.52 seconds a shot, that's limited by our ammo intake limit. And we need to exceed the autoloader limit with the railgun charge, if that makes sense. So we basically have to make our own calculation here of see how many shots per second our current outloader RPM is. So to figure out the shots per second of our outloader, we just take 60 divided by our autoloader limit, which is 145.2. And then we get a value of 0 0.41. This means that the railgun charge limit we need to match is 0. Point, at least 0. 0.41. It has to be faster than outloaders for it to burst work. So we'll just add a couple of more and check our values. If we had two more like this, we we're 0. 0.39 and that means that we should indeed be able to fire uh, how long we want in burst mode now. So that's really what you have to think about. You need to make sure that the railgun charge rate is quicker than your autoloaders because if it's not the burst won't really work and if you have a ammo intake limit that's lower than your autoloader limit you need to calculate the shots per second because otherwise it won't be very accurate. While it's always smart to match your ammo intake limit with your uh, autoloader limit, it for some reasons, like this one, when you need a little, some of that space, it can be smart to not have that. And it works absolutely fine. We can see that uh, the time it takes to empty these racks of uh, shots will take several minutes, so we won't really reach this ammo intake limit. And since this is uh, regular outloaders and not belt fed outloaders, they can load while firing, which belt fed outloaders cannot. In any case, uh, I will rearrange some stuff here because as you might imagine, these spaces right here, right down here are great for these uh, recoil absorbers. As you might know, the turret fitting here should be 5x5 and the corners should be left alone and we can put them in a 5x5 square well. And uh, that's, however, we already covered in many other tutorials. So I'll just add enough recoil absorbers. So basically we can see inaccuracy from recoil. And we'll need to add enough of these until the inaccuracy for recoil gets uh, removed. And you can see when you fire, it just goes down before firing, if we have enough of these. You can see when we're firing this thing that uh, we just need a couple of these actually to remove all the recoil for this gauge. Here we have some basic metal armor on the parts we didn't uh, you know, need to have components on. So basically, um, we don't need as much cooling. I removed a lot of the cooling because before it was the case that the cooling was actually deciding the fire rate of the cannon. This is not the case anymore. Uh, so if you go in here, you have to set the fire rate do on this little APS piece here. So if we just fire here, you can see this is 2400 RPM, the maximum um, fire rate between the shots. 
So um, if we can shoot them in space here, we can see that they're uh, very close. It's basically a kind of shotgun effect. If you want to, you can make this uh, fire rate uh, something like much less, like 400. And then we'll get the burst like this. And that's uh, not really a burst gun, but it can be if you want to. I would set the burst to at least like 1000, maybe 1500 and we get a little bit more spread up burst. Like that. So, let us just repair this little thing here and just test the firepower. Now we have a Sabot shell, a Sabot solid warhead and Sabot warhead mix. It's kind of fast, it's good against armor piercing. You can see it goes through 1, 2 meters of metal, then a plick panel and 1 meter of metal in one burst. It goes through uh, an advanced beam of 4 meters, wood and that. And with the last burst we go through this uh, composite armor and the back side. So it's pretty strong, it's pretty efficient. So uh, just look at some of my other tutorials to armor your up a little bit. Uh, remember that these parts are expensive, I would definitely have some uh, advanced armor mixed in here to protect it. If you need a better base accuracy, then uh, increase the length of the barrel, of course. We can also go in here and set it up to uh, be a little bit more accurate before firing. And hopefully it will hit more often. And if you feel that you don't need the shell speed to be 2200 meters per second, you can of course set the maximum energy per shot and make calculations based on that on how many magnets that you need. It's all up to you. And also you can have only one barrel of course as well if uh, you like that instead. Uh, but then you need a lot more coolers onto your build. So that's a trade-off but uh, it leads to some uh, inaccuracy to have several barrels as you probably know. It's taking shape, advanced armor core, a lot of thick metal and some surge protectors and it should be A-OK. -okay. Since this is a fast firing cannon with very fast shots we need to have some kind of detection that's fast enough. So what I usually like to do is I like to complement with a IR camera tracker onto the turret itself so that we definitely have an extra uh, source of uh, detection coming in here to give us some accurate data. And that should be all you need to know about how to make a burst gun in From the Depth. So if you enjoyed this little tutorial, well then you should definitely leave a like and stay tuned for future instant tutorials, because I intend to cover everything before we're done with this little uh, playlist. This is Jim Odesson, and we're signing out.